Well, hey there, YouTube. Boy, it has been a while, huh, since I have uploaded a video. I uh, took a little break from photography and just kind of sat back and relaxed for a little bit, but the break is over and it's time to get out here and get some new photos. So I have traveled back out to California once again, out on the coast and actually in Point Reyes National Seashore. And this is a beautiful area that I've been trying to get to for a long time. And uh, I'm actually here at the Cypress Tree Tunnel. And the Cypress Tree Tunnel is this road. It's probably about a quarter, maybe a half mile long. And it has these beautiful cypress trees that are growing up over the road there and creates just a beautiful scene. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what my camera is looking at and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the composition that I've put together and some of the choices I've made for getting this photo that I've wanted to get for so long. You can see I'm zoomed in a little bit. Now I've actually got my 70 to 200 millimeter lens on and I'm actually at about 140 millimeter. And I've done that because I wanna get compression. Now again, this is about a quarter to half mile long road. And with that, you have just a long section of these trees that are growing over the road there. But at the end of it is this old building that was built around 1929, old powerhouse. And it actually used to be a radio station for a little bit, I think. But that building is sitting at the end of the road. If I was shooting with a wide angle lens right now, you wouldn't even notice the building there. It would be such a small speck and you wouldn't get what you want as far as you know having that as an element in the photo so I'm zoomed in in order to get compression and so I've got all these trees and even though these trees are spaced a little bit farther far apart from each other because I'm using that telephoto lens it makes the trees look like they're just right on top of each other just bam 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 and then at the end of the road is this beautiful white building that is gonna be the focal point for this photo so because of that, we're using this telephoto lens, about 140 millimeter. Um, settings are pretty basic. I've got it at F16 because I want to get as many of these trees in focus as possible. But at the same time, I also want to have the building down there in focus. So I'm sitting about F16. The camera is telling me 1 13th of a second shutter speed. I'm going to go ahead and fire off one of the photos here, let you take a look at it. And pretty basic shot. But again, this is one of those that I've wanted to come out for so long and get this shot. And as many trips as I've been bring, coming out here to California lately and haven't had a chance to do so yet. I figured coming up on one of my last trips here for a while, I need to go ahead and make a priority to come out here and get this shot. So that's what I've done. So I'm going to continue to take a couple shots here. The lighting, not quite what I was hoping for. I was really hoping for some beautiful rays of light to come through. I'm hopeful that the, the sun is going to kind of peek through some of these clouds that are out there and be able to get me that light that I'm looking for. And uh, hopefully I get that shot that kind of has just those beautiful rays of light cutting through those trees but the nice thing about it still being a little bit overcast is I also don't have harsh lighting right now so I don't have really bright areas and then dark shadows that I have to balance those two exposures together with instead I've just got this nice natural light that I'm going to bump up the contrast a little bit bump up the saturation a little bit and hopefully get the shot that I'm looking for I'm going to take a couple more and then move on to another place here at Point Reyes National Seashore so I've come inland a little bit here and I'm actually standing on the shore of Tamales Bay. And in front of me is the old Brock Schreiber boathouse. 
and as I was driving out to the shore and then even driving back here this boathouse caught my eye because written on it in these letters it says launch for hire and I thought man this is just an old, cool old boathouse here that I want to try to capture a photo I've got this vision for this photo here actually to do a long exposure photo and a couple reasons why i want to do that you can see that there's a little bit of a wake coming in here along the water and the long exposure photo is going to smooth that out and just make it just just milky smooth and that's one of the reasons why i want to do it at the same time i've got this patch of i've got this gray sky over here on the left and then i've got blue sky over here with patchy clouds and i just kind of want to blend all that together and actually get some movement in the sky there so i'm thinking 10 stop neutral density filter in order to get me maybe about a two minute photo maybe maybe a little bit longer maybe a little bit less without the neutral density filter out there at f16 the camera wants to shoot at 1 100th of a shutter under exposing by a full stop i think once i figure out the calculation i should be around that minute to two minute uh, maybe Worst case scenario, I'm going to put the 16 stop filter on. I'm going to put Big Bertha on there and we're going to go about seven minutes. Now, in order to go seven minutes with Big Bertha, you got to raise the ISO a little bit. I don't really want to go that long of a photo. I really want to be around that one to two minute mark. So I'm really going to try the 10 stop filter, adjust the settings if I have to, maybe adjust that aperture either up or down in order to get right around that minute to two minute mark. So let me go ahead and grab that 10 stop neutral density filter. Let me figure out the exposure I need to be and we'll figure out what we have to do on those settings to get the photo that I have envisioned in my head. Okay, using photo pills, I've punched in the current settings on that camera and then told it I'm going to use a 10 stop neutral density filter in order to figure out what the proper shutter speed. If I left the camera settings the same as they are right now, I'd end up with about a 10 second photo. That's not what I want. Um, I've taken a couple different changes that I can do. One, I'm going to adjust the initial camera settings. I'm going to bring it up by a third of a stop. I was under exposing by a full stop. I'm going to go two thirds of a stop. I think I'll still be okay. I'll do a test photo just to make sure before I actually punch that in. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the aperture. I was at F6 I'm going to take a f22 in order to get that to close down more let less light into the camera that way it has to expose longer and then I'm also going to drop the ISO in half I was at ISO 100 that's the base ISO for this camera it has the ability to go down to 50 I'm going to go ahead and cut it down to 50 that's going to do that by doing all those changes that's going to put me at about a 51 second shutter speed typically whenever I use one of these 10 stop neutral density filters it underexposes a little bit so I think with all those changes to the settings putting it out there at about a minute i think i'm going to get the exposure i want only one way to find out and that's try it and that's what we're going to do now i've loaded the 10 stop neutral density filter into my ada filter holder now another thing that i can do if i'm not happy with the settings that all this puts out and i'm not happy with the image i can also add the circular polarizer the circular polarizer is going to give me about another stop and a half to two stops of light which is going to increase that shutter speed to get me closer to that two minute mark that i was looking for but we're going to try it without the circular polarizer first see how the image looks maybe put the circular polarizer on try it another again and see if it looks that better the nice thing about using the circular polarizer it's going to take the reflection off that water and really give it a nice smooth look to it so maybe this is the way to go i won't know until i try it now I've gone ahead and I've focused the camera where I want it to focus and that's right there on the boathouse in front of me um, I'm going to go ahead and take and put the filter on you can see that darkened it up quite a bit now I need to come over and flip this into manual I'm at F22 like I need to be now. I'm going to cut that ISO down to 50 like I talked about doing. Put it at 50. I'm on a bulb exposure because I'm going to run it for close to a minute there. I'm going to get my remote out so that I don't have to touch the camera. Got that on. The remote is on there. It's plugged into the camera. And we'll go ahead and start taking this image and see what happens. Make sure I put the remote into bulb mode. The nice thing about the remote is while it's in bulb mode as it counts up and lets me know how long the exposure is, I'll watch it. I can set it if I want to to count down and automatically quit taking the photo, but I'm just gonna leave it in the bulb mode here and just watch the timer and stop it whenever I think it's right. So we'll go ahead and do this and there it goes. Okay, we're coming up on the time that I thought that we needed to be. I've just crossed 53, 55 seconds, 56, 57, 58, 59, and there's a minute. 
Let's take a look and see how this photo turned out. See, our exposure looks pretty good. We haven't blown out any highlights, which we're happy to see. We also haven't clipped. You can see the histograms there are all nice in the center the way that we want it to. Nothing is stacked up on the left to indicate that it's too dark and nothing is stacked up on the right to indicate that it's too bright. And that goes for all the colors there, for the red, for the green channel, for the blue channel, and then the white channel there. So overall, I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and take it out of that view and let's zoom in a little bit and see how this looks. Got the nice lettering there. We'll be able to lift that up a little bit with shadows to make that stand out a little bit. The sky up here has got the blue like we wanted to. It's got those clouds like I was looking for. Now let's come down and take a look at that water. And that water is just beautifully smooth like we said. I don't think it looks bad as far as reflection off the water. I think with that long exposure, it looks pretty good there. Overall, I'm happy with the photo. Now, one of the things I didn't mention before, one of my goals is actually to make this black and white. And I say that because you've just got this old boat house out there and it's got the lettering on it and it's just kind of a classic structure. And I think that having black and white with this long exposure, you combine those two things together, I think it's gonna turn out to be a good photo. I'm gonna try one more with that uh, circular polarizer on there and see if I can't get a little bit reflection off the water, see how that one turns out, a little bit longer exposure, see if I like it better. But overall, I think this one turned out pretty good and I'm gonna be happy with it. Of course, we won't know how it really turns out until we put it on the computer and do a little post-processing. Hopefully, I got the picture I was looking for. It's been a great trip out here to the Point Reyes National Seashore. This is an area that I've really wanted to get to for quite some time and I'm glad that I finally made it. Being able to photograph that cypress tree tunnel has been on my bucket list and it's another item checked off. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to photograph the Point Reyes Lighthouse. There was so much fog coming in and the lighthouse was closed, so from the vantage point that I could get to, you really couldn't see the lighthouse. Nonetheless, I did make up for it by capturing this great photo of this old boathouse here, and I think with the combination of black and white and long exposure, it's really going to turn out neat. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't done so. And of course, ring that bell so you're notified the next time I upload a video. Until then, happy shooting.